Hi guys, Kelvin here. So today I'll be talking about this motherboard right here and giving my opinion. Now this motherboard right here has been featured in several of our previous video including the NZXT H510 Elite review video, the 3600X overclocking video and soon to be the RAM video that I'm going to review soon which is the XPG. So let's run some of the basic specs before I give my opinion. When it comes to the CPU support, it supports both 2nd and 3rd gen Ryzen processors. It can do some overclocking which I'll explain in a little bit. Now when it comes for the RAM support right here, it can support up to 128 gigs in capacity with a speed up to 4400MHz on the 3rd generation Ryzen. ECC RAM is also supported. Now when it comes to storage, there are several options. First of all is the two PCIe 4x4 NVMe or M.2 lanes right here and there's a total of 8 SATA ports so this board right here is aimed towards content creation and content management as well. Now when it comes to power delivery, it uses a 12 plus 2 VRM setup and it's powered by a 8 and 4 pin on the top on the motherboard right here. So this motherboard is meant for overclocking, in fact we already did the 3600X overclocking video previously. Now when it comes to PCIe support, there's a total of two lanes right here that uses PCIe 4x16 and two lanes that uses PCIe 4x1. Only the first PCI slot right here has this armor guard right here meant to hold your GPU to prevent some sagging. In fact, when it comes to thermal guard and active cooling, there's three of them. There's an active cooling on the X570 chipset right here. There's also cooling on the VRMs right here through its thick passive heat sinks right here. There's also a single M.2 thermal guard on the bottom right here. I wish they included another one on top that would be nicer looking. When it comes to fan headers, there's a total of six of them. Two of them is located on the top right. Two of them is located below the CPU around the left side and two of them is located directly below of the motherboard. I wish they included a total of eight fan headers that will give us some flexibility where two of them can be located somewhere on the right middle side where you can actually cable manage easily. So some of my PC builds, I require to use some extension cables to actually do some cable management easily. I wish ASUS included the extra two for convenience sake. When it comes to I.O., sadly the I.O. shoe is not pre-installed. I wish it was. It has a display port, HDMI port, RJ45 LAN port, DPS2 port, there's a total of 4 USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A ports. There's a total of 3 USB 3.2 Gen 2, two of which are Type-A and one of which is Type-C. The Wi-Fi header and there's a total of 6 audio ports right here. Now when it comes to LED support, there's a total of 3 headers, two of which are the typical 12 volts type which is located on the top right and the bottom right right here. Now when it comes to the 5 volts addressable LED one or RGB is actually located on the top right right here. Now I wish they included maybe one or two more where it's positioned below maybe the AIO pump right here and one more on the motherboard below somewhere right here because most products now are leaning towards the 5 volt ARGB type of header rather than the typical 4 pin 12 volt header right here. In fact most of the AIOs in the market right now are using 5 volt based RGB. When comparing with one generation older, the X470 board, the differences between the two is not so significant, just minute. However, most of the functions like PCIe 4 is not so stable or lockout based on BIOS for these two third gen Ryzen processors. So if you are doing a lot of work related to PCIe 4, especially high read and high write content creation 4K ProRes 422 like that, Definitely you want to go with the latest and the best. So using this motherboard right here is enjoyable, especially for PC build. I can go near mute or full blackout build. I wish all the orange accent here was grey or black. That would look fully amazing, sexily. Now aside from that, overclocking on this board right here is enjoyable. It's very flexible and easy, especially you can check on my 3600X. Ryzen overclocking and undervolting video previously that I just uploaded but I use this motherboard for a particular reason for content creation where I use up to 6 SATA ports right here to do a lot of backupping archival for my done projects that I have done and completed. Aside from that I actually use up to 2 SATA ports for encoding reasons on 
particular project where I have one project on one SSD and media encoder will encode it to a proxy or a different format that is easy to edit in Adobe Premiere itself. So would I recommend this board right here? Definitely for the price, it's much more affordable compared to their alternative series and it's good for a starter board for overclocking as well as content creation. Now remember to like, subscribe and help share this content on social media that will give us the necessary boost so we can do high level of review and content for you guys. Till then, I'll see you guys in the next video.